Reem, wasn't too happy with Captain Sal's orders for him. Babysitting an unconscious prisoner in the brig wasn't a glorious job, or even much of a job at all. For the millionth time he cursed under his breath at his lowly position as a junior maintenance engineer. Yet again, it seemed, he was tasked with some trivial duty barely worthy of a cleaning drone. All he had to do was check the prisoner was breathing every hour or so, and then go back to watching his info slate. Idly, Reem's thoughts drifted to the rumours about the pink passenger on board that the other crew could not shut up about. Apparently, it was a shoulder's hatchling that was ankle high and spoke in a deep, demonic tone. Others said that it was wrinkly and ugly beyond words, but able to stop pulse blasts with his hands and eat a legion of starving soldiers. The most ridiculous claimed that it was responsible for taking down the Zillion prisoner and not the captain. The only thing the rumours all agreed on was that it was short and very, very pink. A beeping filled the air as Reem's alarm reminded him to make his hourly check on the prisoner. With a sigh, he got up and went into the cell to make sure his nasal orifices were in the open position. It was only after he was within Talon's reach that he noticed that the Zillion was only pretending to be unconscious. Sal was sitting down to third meal in his quarters when he received an emergency request on his communicator. His eye stalks twitched in alarm when he read that he was required in the ship's brig. Cursing furiously, he sent orders to security to meet him there in full gear, double time. This run was turning out to be one of the most strenuous he had done in a long while. Which god had he angered to deserve this? Still cursing, he raised a general lockdown to the entire ship, putting crew at emergency stations and sending the passengers to their rooms. It would be easier to sweep the ship for the escaped prisoner if everything was sectioned off. At least he wouldn't have to deal with the pink Nate this time around. Xylem was angry. Angry at his broken knee. Angry at his headache. Angry at having lost his custom pulse weapon. Angry at having been taken down by the captain's pet. Angry at failing to assassinate his target. The plan was so simple. Get on board as a passenger, make a fuss to draw the captain out, kill him, take an escape pod, collect his earnings from the rival shipping company. The briefing never mentioned anything about a guard animal. Caught between his species equivalent of a snarl and a wince, Xylem abruptly changed direction and limped down an auxiliary corridor. He had been heading for the captain's cabin to finish the job, but realised he should deal with the animal first to avoid repeating yesterday's mistake. For some reason, the captain had set it to guard the passengers instead of his own person. Strange. Maybe this was why it was missed at the briefing. Or maybe the captain was concerned for the safety of his passengers. <laughs> the concealed holster for his pulse pistol was uncomfortably empty, but his talents would be more than enough to finish what was started. After all, the advantage of surprise was on his side this time. Nathan was strolling back to his room after a nice, relaxing shower. All the other aliens had continued to avoid him all day, and the only one that had looked like it was summoning the courage to approach him was probably scared away by a friendly smile. It had been a nice change of pace, he thought to himself, all this freedom from unwanted attention. Maybe, if he could manage this more often, then perhaps he could extend his travels a little longer. Nathan was snapped out of his thoughts by a sharp warning sound and garbled intercom transmission. His translator helpfully informed him that there was some sort of emergency lockdown and passengers should lock themselves in their quarters. Good mood evaporating fast, he increased his pace a little. The room had been empty when the Zillion had gotten there, but it was an easy matter to lurk behind the closed door waiting for the animal to return. It did not take long. Xylem launched himself forward to the figure on the other side of the opening doorway and missed. The little pink animal reeled back with surprising reflexes, retreating back into the hallway. But it was not reflexes that had saved him from having his throat torn open. Xylem's broken knee had let him down in the critical moment, not giving him the reach he was used to. Trying to maintain the momentum of his attack, he stepped forwards into the doorway and swung his claws again, tearing the wall where the creature had just been. Unbeknown to both Xylem and Nathan, behind that section of wall was a near-forgotten and ancient emergency door override chip that had been functioning for centuries unmaintained. A chip that failed as a claw passed through it. The door slammed down in the manner designed to protect against depressurization, effortlessly bisecting the zillion 
before he could even scream. Slowly, the door retracted, leaving the stunned, blood-painted Nathan staring in shock at a gore-splattered hallway. Sal wanted to be sick. The member of security he was supporting was being sick, all over the decking. It wasn't like he was contributing all that much to the mess. Apparently, the crew member was the one to discover the Pink One's horrific rampage. The poor prisoner must have come across the human by accident. And Nate had not been forgiving, using his impossible strength to tear the zillion in two. He sent the Pink One to medical to be checked for injuries and get cleaned up, with a not-so-subtle amount of his security in escort. The cleaning drones were on the way. All he had to do was keep the other passengers from seeing this. Sal looked at the roof and sighed in exasperation as he mentally prepared to file another report. How did the gore get all the way up there? Never mind. He didn't want to know. Reem groggily opened his eyes to stare at the overly bright white roof. Slowly he realised he was in the medical bay, not purgatory. His body had a dull throb to it, but not in an unpleasant way. Thors came back to him with brig duty as he slowly moved one limb at a time to test for injuries. He stretched his neck to one side and that. None of the medical staff saw Reem's fall from his bed as he realised that the pink one was asleep in the next cot. No one would have disagreed with his reaction if they had.